Thank you. Welcome to the Clackamas County Board of Commissioners Policy Sessions on this August 10th, 2021. Administrator Gary Schmidt, you're up. Thank you, Chair Smith. Uh, so we have a lot of items once again today. So here's the plan. We'll go through the issues list. I'm going to revise the order just a bit. At 11.20 sharp, we'll go to the consent agenda list and go till 12. And whatever is not done, we'll come back to this afternoon. So I know there's a lot of staff here. I'll do my best to get you covered as quickly as we can. We're going to start with the Veterans Advisory Committee follow-up because we have a guest today, and I want to honor that. So we have Brenda Durbin, Social Services Director from Health, Housing, Human Services, and Jerry Craig, the Chair of the Veterans Advisory Council of Clackamas County. Uh, this is a follow-up, Commissioners, to a request I had made and that you approved uh, for the Veterans Advisory Committee to uh, review its mission, its bylaws, and to report back on how they can even more strengthen the relationships between the Board of Commissioners and our Veterans Advisory Council. And they have done that, and this is their follow-up. They have a memo that's in your packet. Thank you very much. Outstanding work. So, Brenda, would you kick, a, kick us off, please? Good morning, uh, Chair Smith, uh, Administrator Schmidt, and members of the board. My name is Brenda Durbin. I'm the Director of Clackamas County Social Services. Very honored to be here with uh, Jerry Craig, who is the newly installed chair of the Clackamas County Veterans Advisory Council. Uh, we do have a report for you. I'm really uh, uh, thankful for the work that the entire council did to put this together um, in response to the concerns raised by this commission. And I'll hand it over to Jerry for some introductory remarks. Um, I want to thank the uh, commissioners for allowing us. Excuse to me, I'm getting a wave. Are the microphones on? <coughs> Is the green light on? Apparently not. Thank you. Please start over. Okay. <laughs> um, on behalf of the uh, council, I first have to thank you very much for your uh, assistance in uh, letting us put together this program and reevaluate everything we've been doing in the past. I'm a six year member of the group and uh, I think it's been worthwhile for everybody. Uh, I know that a lot of the VAC members have learned something and uh, that was the intent. Let's provide you the information. I uh, hope the ex expectations of the report are what you want. Gary has said a couple times about he thought it was excellent report, and we'll leave it with that. Brenda. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'll go through just a quick summary of what we propose. Uh, so we have a, an ambitious but I believe doable work plan for the coming 12 months. Um, we are going to um, uh, work with PGA to distribute a survey, uh, both electronically and in paper form, uh, to residents throughout Clackamas County. Um, the goal of the survey is to identify uh, the current needs um, of veterans in Clackamas County, and our intention is to repeat that survey on an annual basis, um, and then in the future that will help inform uh, the annual work plan uh, that the Veterans Advisory Council um, will work on. And um, our hope is to get that uh, survey completed in September, out in October, and then the end of October we'll be reviewing the survey results and incorporating them into um, uh, and, and modifying the, the plan as needed based on that survey results. Um, I'm really excited about this next project. We're going to host a behavioral health summit uh, for veterans um, in cooperation with a number of community partners, um, including our, the Clackamas County Be Behavioral Health Division, uh, Care Oregon, and TRICARE. Uh, we have a newly established subcommittee for veterans' uh, behavioral health and substance abuse needs. Um, we've done a lot of great work um, reaching out to the community, identifying where the current gaps are, where the current services are. And we've known for a time that one of the gaps is really identifying uh, behavioral health uh, providers who are trained in military culture um, as, as just sort of a, a desire to be culturally responsive. Uh, we want to ensure that the people who are helping our veterans understand veterans' culture. Um, so we hope to partner with Camp Withycombe to actually host that at their facility, um, and uh, we'll keep you updated as we go along with those planning. 
Um, we also want to uh, work on a veterans job fair. I've reached out to Clackamas Workforce Partnership and our own uh, community and family uh, connections group. Um, there's a lot of interest. Um, and so that's a little, uh, not as far along in the planning process. Uh, that might not happen until the later part of 2022. Uh, but I think there is some really good interest and some good partners that can come together um, to do that. We have an amazing County Veterans Service Office. Um, every year they bring in uh, at least $10 million in new veterans benefits to Clackamas County veterans and their families. We want to make sure that every veteran in the county uh, knows about that office, knows that it's free, and they know how to access it. Um, so over the next couple of months, we're going to um, embark on a really ambitious outreach strategy using all types of media um, to really promote uh, that service to get more veterans in the door uh, so they can um, secure those veterans that they have earned through their military service. We know that this board has a deep connection with veterans. We want to make sure that you're aware of all the events that are happening. Um, our Veterans Advisory Council includes members who have deep connections with a number of veterans-related um, services and organizations. So on a monthly basis, we're going to get to you a little list of upcoming activities uh, that you can participate in as uh, meets your schedule. Uh, while our County Veterans Service Office come to every meeting and do updates, we're going to just do a little more work in sort of uh, formalizing um, what, we're gonna, what they're going to update us on. Um, the report includes a number of activities that are going to relate to um, some of the larger uh, county activities uh, through performance of Clackamas, including growing a vibrant economy, again through um, uh, engagement with workforce partners, um, safe communities um, through um, you know, ensuring behavioral health supports are necessary, are available, um, and uh, building public trust through good government uh, through transparency um, efforts. Uh, the council has updated our bylaws, and they are in the process of getting the official um, okay uh, from the uh, Board of County Commissioners. Um, and then twice a year, uh, we uh, hope that you will invite uh, uh, Jerry um, and his uh, successors in his role uh, to do a, an official update uh, for the board at one of these meetings. Um, my boss, Rod Cook, has had an opportunity to meet with the, um, with the Major uh, General of the Camp Withicum. Uh, I understand that was a very fruitful um, discussion facilitated by Commissioner Schrader. Thank you very much. Uh, so we look forward to uh, continuing that engagement. Um, and one of the most um, sort of concrete ones coming up will be that Veterans Summit. So that is what we have for you. Again, we hope that it meets with your approval. And Jerry and I are happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, Martha. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you so much because this is really going to re-energize everything. So thank you, Brenda. Thank you, and thank you, Rod. We we did have a conversation with General Stencil, and he's supposed to get us a list of contacts, isn't he, Rod? At some point, um, that we can maybe uh, more closely work uh, with them on issues because they have a very robust family program there too. Mm -hmm. So we haven't gotten those names yet, but. Um, that was a great. That was a great connection we had, and the other. I'm going to make one suggestion. Uh, the other group that's getting involved in veterans issues is, believe it or not, the North Clackamas Chamber of Commerce. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, um, actually, I got to meet um, one of the generals that they brought out at, with the come with General Stencil and the rest of the guys. That they are very interested in veterans issues and veterans jobs and employment pathways. So if you could include them on your list of not the usual, you know, but Laura would be really interested in, get, they would be very interested in getting that. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those are the, our employers yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, and our potential employers uh, for yeah. the veterans. And, mm -hmm. Well, and, and also they're interested in making sure that the, pa I mean, they're, they're big supporters. Okay. Oh, that. And then keep the community college informed, too. That's a big thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Thank you, okay. Commissioner. Thank you. Guys. Yeah, this report is, um, uh, you know, I read it uh, with keen interest. <clears throat> and there are, are a lot of action items on it, which I like. I think it gives purpose to our VAC. Mm -hmm. I am very much appreciative of that. Um, the, um, if there's a way, we can. The, the health we summits, can, excellent. The jobs that. fair. Um, Outreach okay. so the survey can, is all really good. Um, okay. I appreciate that. I appreciate the twice yearly update to commissioners because we need to know what's going on. Uh, of course, anybody can reach out to any commissioner at any time. There's no prohibition on that, and I encourage the veterans to do that. 
um, as we all probably have heard from veterans in the county. Continue with that. This is not instead of any personal contact, but I really appreciate this. I consider it to be proactive. Commissioners, uh, Commissioner Scholl, you're a veteran? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any further comments? Yeah, I just have one question. On the regular reports from key stakeholders, organizations, those are the monthly scheduled reports. Do those reports come from subcommittees? Or who's going to report on that? We have um, uh, one very active uh, subcommittee, the, the Behavioral Health um, and Suicide Prevention. Um, the um, employment is uh, usually a report from Kenny Bichek, uh, who works for the county and runs our veterans uh, workforce program uh, for the education. RB Green from the community college gives us updates. So um, uh, one committee, uh, but most of them are updates from council members or longtime allies allies of the council with uh, deep um, uh, content expertise. Okay, good. That's an outstanding idea. The, the other aspect of that is the members we have, to include me, we're in constant contact with the VFWs and legions. Okay. Yeah, I'm a legionnaire out of Milwaukee, but because of my chaplaincy, I, I, tr I try to contact all those groups. <laughs> we also have within the county six different groups that have collected for coffee but ended up meeting almost every week. And I try to keep in contact with them and, and visit with them. So there's an extra group out there that uh, have other interests. And, and so I try to keep in contact with them. That there's about five, that comes up to about 500 different veterans from time to time on different groups, whether they be in Happy Valley. Um, my associations with the 1st Cav, 1st Infantry, and the 25th Infantry Division all, all meet within the Portland, Clackamas area. Uh, most of the places they, <laughs> they actually met have now closed, so they're finding new places, uh, and uh, so they can meet. But uh, we try to keep track of all those, and then uh, you're talking about North Clackamas Chamber of Commerce. I'm a part of that too, to Good. a point. Okay. I've known Laura for a long, long time, and she's always been interested in veterans. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were doing some work with her. But I mean, the people we have, we 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 try to at the at the meetings, I'll open them up, and they tell us what's going on. And that's my hope is to be able to keep you informed what they're doing, so you have a list. And whether you want to visit a leader or VFW, uh, I'm sure we can or you can call them and, and they'll allow you to come in. You're always welcome. Good, thank you. Any other, um, Commissioner Fisher? Yeah, so thank you and thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. I'm really interested in the Veterans Behavioral Health Summit in that it's really doing a keen look at workforce, which is an area of critical need across the entire continuum of care, and I applaud recognizing that and really being proactive. I expect that when we have more individuals in the workforce interested in in areas for veterans, it just helps. It helps everyone. So, really appreciate that. Just wanted to call that out. It's a critical need. Any other call? I just want to just say um, appreciate the work of the VAC and Jerry. Appreciate your mm -hmm. leadership and and um, bringing the help, bringing everyone together and getting us to this better place. So, you know, thank you for everything you do on behalf of veterans. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I do too. I just think this is lovely. Um, I'm very fortunate in that I've had family members who are veterans who have fought in foreign wars, and because of that, I'm an auxiliary member of the VFW post, and what I can say, I'm a lifetime member of that, and I'm very supportive of all your activities, and it's a, uh, priority in my life that they give so much themselves so we could enjoy our way of life and our open democracy and our open elections and even having this discussion today. So I'm eternally grateful for everything that all the veterans do. And Brenda, thank you for going in and uh, taking this assignment and doing Yeoman's work on it. Thank you.
Gary. All right, so you're just getting an update. Thank you very much, uh, Brenda and Jerry. Uh, this is not on your agenda, but I'm adding uh, a cooling center update because we have high heat expected starting tomorrow. Uh, Brenda will give that update as well. So go ahead. Okay, putting on my different hat. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Um, so cooling centers. So we continue to reach out to community partners. We have um, some additional cooling center sites um, on our website um, above and beyond what we had a couple weeks ago when we were here talking about cooling centers. Uh, those include uh, the Milwaukee Center, the Letting Library, and the Canby Adult Center. Um, we have added uh, transit links to the county uh, cooling center uh, website so people um, can um, easily um, find out what uh, bus lines uh, run past these various centers. And we're going to enhance that mapping um, uh, link. If you go onto the website next to each center, there's a little, little button that says map. And we're going to make that a little bit bigger so people can easily click on that and uh, find out how they can um, uh, most easily get to the nearest uh, cooling centers uh, near their sites. I know that our uh, friends up in Malala are trying to um, open a cooling center this week. Um, there's some logistical challenges up there, uh, but once again, social services is able to offer um, a small daily stipend uh, to these small community providers um, who are opening their doors to make sure that everyone is safe during the heat wave. Do we know where that could be? Know it would be in the same location where the Malala Warming Center is in the um, winter time. And I'm sorry, I don't have the address right off the top Thank of my you. head. It's the Lutheran Church. Well, there's Nazarene, and there's St. James, and then there's, which, Nancy, you're shaking your head. Yeah, the Nazarene. It's the Nazarene. Oh, oh it's Nazarene. Okay. Yeah. It's one of the larger facilities. Thank you mm -hmm. for that. Uh, the Clackamas Service Center is, uh, they have throughout the summer is um, offering 24-7 uh, frozen water, salty snacks, Gatorade. Um, during their opening hours, they'll have misters, um, so people experiencing houselessness or other folks in the neighborhood uh, can come down to the, uh, the, the service center. Um, so um, it's going to be another hot one. I uh, just want to reiterate the message that we need um, everyone to step in, uh, check in on your neighbors. If you're out and about driving, maybe have a couple extra bottles of water in your car in case you see someone who may be in distress and needs some water. Um, we know how quickly heat can cause um, serious injury and even death, and it's just really critical that, um, that we're all helping each other get through these uh, another tough week. Just uh, pause for a moment. Yes, Commissioner Fisher. So the, I believe it was the Oregonian that reported the deaths in the mobile home parks. Are we doing any extra outreach to mobile homes? Uh, not, not that I'm aware of, no, but, um, um, yeah, we can look into that, uh, making sure that people, um, that the, that the, that the managers of the, of the parks understand where the resources are because not everyone in the park may have access to the internet. So if we can get to the, the property management, um, I think that's going to be critical, um, for some of these, uh, lower income communities where maybe the, the housing stock is not well insulated and, and the folks who are living there are at increased, um, risk. Um, so I will look into that and see if we can push this information out to, to some mobile home parks and other lower income communities. Ken, you know, it might be, there's some statewide organizations that lobby on behalf of um, manufactured homes or park owners. Right. It might be a matter of working with those larger mm. entities to push out information more easily. I just remember when I was a new commissioner, Commissioner Savas took me all around the really considered affordable housing all through unincorporated Clackamas County, and there are substantial mobile home parks yes. where, where people live and yeah. I'm concerned about them during this heat. Of yeah. course. Thank you for that. Um, I will add, <clears throat> commissioners, you have an email that just came in from the Association of Morgan Counties. Governor Brown has declared a state of emergency due to forecasted heat and applies statewide August 10 through 20 to offer up available resources on the heat. Uh, she is directed to the Office of Emergency Management to activate the state's coordination center to coordinate decision protective measures and to provide any assistance requested by OEM to support in this response. I believe uh, that we are, are doing what is, I think, necessary. However, because of that, uh, uh, resources could be available. There's a couple of links here in your email, but um, I think she's mindful of that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. I just want to say that I don't know if the, any new data has come out uh, 
you know, either affirm or add to um, the incidences where people um, passed away during the heat, um, last heat spell we had. But what I did see at the time was that it didn't seem to be any particular type of housing was more or less susceptible. People in their own single family home in a nice neighborhood had, you know, there were cases of people just, you know, I think it's a matter of just really being self-aware, having that care or, or a family member maintain them and how we get the message out to everyone, you know, in the area with the two million people, over two million people in this region. I think it's an impossible task, but you know, is there any number, is there any in indicators thus far that have come out? Again, I, that was from based on the last heat spell, but is there any type of, of, um, of um, setting or re residency or mobile home parks or that are more susceptible or not than others, or is it just w widespread like I recall it being? Yeah, I have not had a chance to, to dig into that data. I think it was just released a couple of days ago, but I think that is a, an important thing for us to look at, um, uh, you know, learn from what's happened in the past and see if there are some commonalities in location or type of housing where we could uh, direct uh, our resources. Right. Yeah. Any other comments for the presenter on this topic? Gary. Very good. Thank you, Brenda, very much. Thank you again, Jerry, for being here. Again, I'm, I'm rotating the order. Next, transportation maintenance, maintenance facility relocation update. Uh, Dan Johnson, Director of Transportation and Development. There was a memo in your packet. You have discussed this previously in executive session, commissioners. Now is the public discussion. So, Dan, tee it up, please. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, commissioners, chair. Dan Johnson, Director of Transportation and Development. Um, the county and seller, also known as Beaver Creek Structures, are parties to a certain disposition agreement that the board and the public are aware of. Um, essentially concerning approximately 11.76 acres of land located off Beaver Creek Road in the Oregon City area. Uh, and, the, and the requirement to develop a turnkey facility to house Clackamas County's transportation maintenance operations. Um, a lot's happened since our original agreement uh, between pandemics, wildfires, ice storms, et cetera. Uh, and these, these circumstances um, in concert with the responses to these challenges have had impacts on labor and commodities markets. Additionally, uh, economic inflation is currently at, uh, at levels not seen since 2008. All this information that we've shared and discussed today. Um, in recognition of the aforementioned circumstances, uh, staff has re uh, received um, notice that Beaver Creek Structures has asserted that uh, they cannot build this facility for the originally guaranteed max price that we had discussed. Um, in recognition of the aforementioned circumstances, staff has reviewed all available data, including actual bids, and affirmed the market impacts noted above. And while a variety of options um, are available, uh, based on available data, it appears the option to increase the purchase price by approxim from approximately 29.8 to approximately 33.9 million um, has the least financial impact while achieving the objective of relocating the Clackamas County Transportation Maintenance Facility out of the floodplain of the Abernathy Creek to ensure they can provide necessary services to the citizens of Clackamas County during times of emergency operations. Attached for your consideration is the Fourth Amendment uh, for consideration by the board. And in conclusion, um, you know, should the board uh, propose to approve this, uh, staff would request the board direct the county administrator and direct part, director of the Department of Transportation and Development to assess ways to cover these costs. Um, as we've discussed, there are ways to do so, a variety of ways to do so, and we would bring that recommendation back to the board for further consideration. Uh, I am here to answer any questions you might have. Questions for the presenter or comments? <coughs> Chair, I'm with one question. Commissioner Shaw. Dan, last week when we talked about the bids for those materials that... Can you uh, speak into your microphone? Thank you. Last week when we talked about the material bids for those materials that are seeing increased prices, that was a week ago. Are you still co convinced that those bids are good and that this $34 million is going to fly without any additional increases? I have no information to suggest it was a result in an increase. I also, as, as we've discussed, this agreement contemplates a, a contingency amount and a value engineering exercise to also increase that contingency to also buffer about against any possible uh, necessity to come back and add additional funds to the project. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Commissioner Stavis. In general, this is not a comment about this particular um, matter, but 
in general, uh, the number of projects that are either about to be underway or that are on the books to be built. Um, I just got concerns about the very same thing we're facing here as it applies to others and what we are going or how and, you know, if we're going to pick winners or losers um, coming in advance or ahead. Um, and I know that all these projects aren't in the same stage of of that either readiness or being able to assess or purchase or actually go forward with the funding, um, which would again get the latest cost and so forth. So that's my concern. I we think we need to have a strategy on all of the projects. And Gary, I asked you for that a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, any any progress on that report, or did yes. you send, send it? I haven't seen it. It's not been sent yet. And Nancy Bush and Elizabeth Comfort, right there in the front row, are working on that as we speak. And as soon as they're ready, they'll have that information that I'll share with the entire board. But we're working on that right now. Yeah, I, I know a project like this. People really don't know much about it. Um, I'm sure there's not a, a big groundswell of. And I'm not being critical, but it's just reality. There's not a big ground, groundswell of public awareness or, or support or 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 anything you know pe you know people just don't know about this whereas some of these other projects there's huge community interest and um, so mm -hmm. I'm more speaking to the other projects that mm -hmm. well, we need to be mindful mm -hmm. that uh, somehow how we make them um, proceed forward um, in, in this in this uh, escalation of cost crisis if you will I'll call it that I just wanted to just share that well Commissioner Savas I agree with you and I've had conversations as well moving forward on a lot of projects that uh, uh, <clears throat> this board has been considering for years and years and years. Now it's finally time to move forward on them and we find ourselves in an escalating inflation scenario which is causing all these projects to increase in value where it's not budgeted for. And I, it's great concern to me as well. I do believe, however, on some of these projects, time is on our side and we will deliberately and thoughtfully consider each one independently as they go forward and the funding sources for those. Um, on this particular project, I believe uh, Administrator Schmidt will look at ways to um, uh, backfill the increased building materials uh, that we're all seeing across anything, whatever we want to do. Um, so we'll just have to wait for that information, and you're right, perfectly right. Uh, Dan, you have your card up. Yeah, my apologies, um, Chair. I thought since this is a public discussion, I think there are, it's, it's important to share, as it relates to this project, there are pros and cons associated with the impacts of the pandemic, et cetera, and the commodities markets. One of the pros that I think it's important to share with the public is that we proactively went out with the county um, when securing a $20 million bond, um, and that proactive approach during that pandemic um, resulted in a lower than anticipated interest rate on our debt service, which is saving us significant money on an annual basis going forward. So just, we haven't had that in a public discussion, I think, for some time, and I think it's just important to highlight that. So thank you. Well, you, know, you make a good point on that. We would have never got the interest rate had we not done it or mm -hmm. you done it then. And so if you, if you were to calculate the overall costs by the time this is finished, Maybe we'll be better off than not. So I'm going to choose to be optimistic going forward on this. Commissioner Savas. Yeah. So um, the other thing, probably just put it out there as we're talking about this, let people know that these aren't general fund dollars. These are transportation dollars, correct? Ultimately. There, there are a variety of ways to fund it. I, we have gotten no direction to use general fund associated with this particular project to right. add to it, correct? Right. But, but this facility is being built with transportation dollars. Correct. Right. So my point is, or not my point. So my next question is, um, how are we doing on our road construction uh, annual paving projects? I mean, are those as robust as, as normal? As we had talked previously, and this is some time ago, almost back to 2019, when we originally talked about this, the desire from the board at that particular time was to ensure we had, um, on average, an annual uh, external paving package of, of $8.5 million or larger. And yes, we are achieving that number now. It fluctuates year to year uh, based on availability of the projects and scheduling with the projects. Um, but that part, let me make sure we're clear, that $8.5 million was once HB 2017 was fully funded. So we're still a couple years out from that, but we are achieving that number um, to date. Okay. Yep. Okay. Any other comments from anybody? Um, so, Gary, how do we proceed from here? So the protocol would be that you would make a motion right now to approve, and then we would put it on your Thursday business meeting to just ratify the decision you make today. Okay. I'll entertain a motion for approval. I move that we approve the Fourth Amendment to Disposition Agreement. 
for the maintenance facility. I'll second that. Commissioner Scholl has made the motion and Commissioner Schrader has approved it. Any further discussion on this topic? Seeing none, Shannon, please call the poll. Commissioner Savas? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Schrader? Aye. Commissioner Scholl? Aye. Chair Smith? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Dan. you, Dan. So because time is of the essence, when, when it's ready to be signed, as soon as today or tomorrow, Chair Smith will sign it, and then we'll just ratify it this Thursday's business meeting. Got it. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. All Gary, right. what's up next? Next, back to the start, American Rescue Plan Act update. Nancy Bush, County Operations <laughs> Officer, Elizabeth Comfort, Finance Director. This is just your weekly update. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Commissioners. Nancy Bush, County Operations Officer. So just a few updates. Um, so the business committee, we have the dollars that we, has been sent to that. So we are um, getting a lot of information at this time and actually working with the business community as well as those that serve the business community to find out you know, what kind of application we're looking for and could it be tiered and those types of things, which are things that we've had discussions here. So we're still working through those issues, but we're getting through them. Our nonprofits, um, we are continuing to work with them as well. Um, Martine uh, Kobles is actually working on finding the, those um, that have not received funding from CARES before or from ARPA um, and are, re are not receiving other dollars in other ways. So we're talking about that capacity building, how do we, we build that, and then how do we make sure that they have the funding, which is that $2 million that you approved, to make sure that they have basic needs to get out to the communities. Um, also, just to let you know, um, a couple of you have asked for a list of everything that has been brought to our attention and has been requested, and we are working on that as today, and I hope to have that to you later today, if not in the morning, um, and then we'll have that on our issues list next week. And that is our brief update, unless you have some questions. Any questions for the presenter? Comments? I have a quick question. Sure. You might. Okay. So, when are we finally going to find out from the Treasury? Um, um, I yeah. believe the language, what was the language? That, it wasn't soon. Shortly. Shortly. Shortly was the shortly. language that they used. <laughs> <laughs> they said that we are going to be getting it shortly. <laughs> shortly. Which means in government time, right? Okay. Well, that's what right, we, we were wondering. It's like, is that a month? Is that tomorrow? But yeah, we've heard shortly. Okay. Just, just. Checking. Thank you for that edification. <laughs> yes. Just checking. We still think it will be this month. We still think it will be by the end of this month. We're hoping okay. it's this month. Okay. We do have a, a report that's due on the 31st. Mm -hmm. So it would that be really nice to have guides before we have to do a report. Is that, that'll be shortly? That's yeah. shortly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Okay, thank Gary. you. Next, board town hall topics. Dylan Blaylock from Public and Government Affairs. There's a memo in your packet as well. Go ahead, Dylan. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners and County Administrator Schmidt. I am Dylan Blaylock with Public and Government Affairs. I come before you as a follow-up to a policy session that we held back in February where we agreed on the town hall uh, schedule moving forward. We've had several town halls since that time. And now PGA wishes to seek your topic approval on a quarterly basis. So we'll be coming back every three months with what our recommendations are, or at least uh, what we've been hearing, our topics that the board would like covered. Uh, you have three before you that for September, October, and November, September child care concerns and needs, October next year's legislative priorities, and in November public safety in Clackamas County. One little note on that last one, that is the time that Sheriff Brandenburg is available, so I would not like to move that one to a different month, uh, if at all possible, if we are interested in having that topic, because she gets very busy very far out. Uh, let me see, there's also some recommendations for alternative topics at the bottom of the memo. Uh, we are open to any or all of these, of course. We go ahead and commit to the topics that, that you all decide, and we're happy to do that. The last thing I will mention is that by no means do we are we limited to just three over the next three months. We are always happy to go ahead and hold impromptu town halls on topics that you all determine. We are happy to do that. We have done them in, with four or five day no, days notice before very successfully. So with that, um, I seek uh, your guidance. I would like uh, to remain flexible and not commit on any topic so we can respond 
to a situation that may be critical. And I have no idea. I'm not foreshadowing. I'm not predicting anything. I just want this board to be able to have the flexibility to say, mm, we're not going to do that now, and um, we, we should do this instead. And, you know, I think since we're the ones that are instigating this, we need to be um, maybe have, you know, more comment on that. Uh, I will entertain any other topics from commissioners during this discussion, but Commissioner Savas, you have your card up. Yeah, the other topic I think we should be talking about it because it's coming up um, and people are raising a lot of questions about it. Why didn't we hear about this before and so on and so forth. That's the congestion pricing tolling aspect. Um, so, you know, there's so much going on in transportation right now. I think that's yeah. to not put a transportation related one, at least particular that, that particular item in particular is a gathering of great interest. I think so. I think the public should deserve some kind I of think that is opportunity excellent. for an update and also opportunity to um, opine. But I think we had, it needs to be, some, have some experts come in and at least lay the groundwork of what's happening so there's no misinformation and then let people comment based on that. I think that is extremely timely. I would entertain doing that, it, depending on <clears throat> how nimble you folks, and we do need some experts. Uh, and I think and it needs, that topic needs one topic, congestion pricing and tolling, to give an opportunity not only for the public to weigh in, but to educate them how this came about and what our value statement is on transportation, why we supported the legislation we did, uh, all the moving parts uh, to get financing, and and you, you've been following this, deal and you know the topics. Um, Paul, I recommend and board that we either do this in September or October. What's your feelings on that? I'm fine with that. Um, Commissioner. But, but, but I would like to make sure that we don't lose the, well, I have information on the child care piece. Yes. When, and when Gary tells us. And it's I know time. that yeah. is first and foremost, so that's why I recommend it either September or October. October. And we yeah. can take the temperature on which we think we need to do first. Right. But, Commissioner okay. Scholl, you had your hand up. Yes, Chair Smith. I had on my notes here, too, to bring up the tolling transportation congestion pricing issue. I think that's really a hot that's topic. Great. Please talk into your microphone, sir. It's so they, they can hear it. I'm sorry. Uh, I had on my list here to bring up the tolling issue, transportation, and congestion pricing, like uh, Commissioner Savas brought up. This is a very pressing issue. It's on the minds of a lot of people. And the sooner we get a rope around it, the better. So if we can get this early, that'd be better. Um, OK. Um, Dylan, that's fine. At what point, um, we're kind of out of order here, but um, November Public Safety in Clackamas County. Do we want, I'm, going, I'm, I'm skipping out of order and I'll come back to child care, I promise, because I know it's a larger topic. Uh, is it, uh, do we want the sheriff to attend that? I recommend yes. Gary recommends yes. Okay, so that one needs to really stay for November. Martha, would you like to talk about the uh, child care concerns and needs. Yeah, and so basically... Please talk into your microphone. Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so, and I, uh, Commissioner Fisher and I have talked about this as well, but um, Bridget Daisy, who is our workforce uh, CEO here, basically they have identified with the education service districts with, with uh, the new superintendent, Larry Didway, and we have talked to the superintendents previously a couple of years ago that their big focus is early childhood learning, preschool daycare. I don't, you know, I guess preschool is different than daycare, but when I see my little guy, it seems very similar to what they're doing in after school programs. This is also um, what I can tell you is that it's become a national issue. I know that uh, the administration, the current administration, has looked at child care uh, as an economic development issue, allowing parents to get back into the workforce, and there's almost calling it soft infrastructure. Does that make sense? It's the infrastructure for people to get back to work um, and give them an opportunity you know, and I, like I said, I think both Sonia, at least I, I know Sonia and I have had children who have had to use daycare. Okay, my daughter is a prosecutor, uses sure. it all the time. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, the other piece of this is that the National Association of Counties has actually a prototype of how to 
bring this issue to the fore in the community, and I don't have that literature with me today because it's in a pile somewhere at my house. But I'll find it. Um, <laughs> I thought it might be something we could all look at. Mm -hmm. Bridget sent us an email the other day, and she wants us to sign on to a letter. She asked Commissioner Fisher and I, um, and I basically said, um, I would be glad to give permission, but only after my colleagues were briefed on this, okay? Because I don't, we don't like surprises, okay? No surprises. I haven't seen the letter yet. Hmm. Um, the thing that I want to, I want to just put a flag up on, because the plan is for the Early Learning Hub to send an email to relevant leaders and stakeholders. So that, right now, is a county function. So. I don't know if Rod can add anything to this because my concern is, if I was going to have a concern, is what would be the cost of a county department because we remember it's a budget piece as well. I don't mind putting all of my time and effort into this and if other commissioners choose to do that, that's great. But I want to make sure that we're, we're staying on course with what our goals are, Gary. That's, that's my big concern with this. So I, I don't know if, if the Early Learning Hub getting involved with this, I'm assuming it will be just part of their job and plan as they normally do. It's not going to be adding, you know, that's, so that's kind of what, that was the only thing I kind of wanted to point out because um, I didn't, I wasn't sure that you were aware that this has had been going on and that there I'm not, that, that there no. was a plan and I think that we gotta make sure everybody's on the same page with a plan here. Mm -hmm. They do want to get a letter out early this week, but now I see this as a larger community conversation. I don't see it as a I've said I've talked to, with Commissioner Fisher about this for quite a bit. Do not see this as what I would call a traditional campaign, maybe that people will decide that they want to go out for money, or maybe they want to decide that there's incentive packages. I don't know what that would be yet. I see this as a first larger community outreach uh, to find out what we're doing right, okay? What we're doing wrong, why, why do we, if we have a desert, we have a desert? And I'd really like to see the business community heavily involved in this through the North Clackamas Chamber. I haven't talked to them yet about this, but, to me, if we hear from employers as well, that would be a big, you know, it would, it would not just be advocacy, it would also be the practicality of mm -hmm. what employers are seeing, what they want to advocate for so they can have a solid workforce. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, this sounds so what do you really think? interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, one of the uh, uh, issues that I brought up when I was a commissioner here last time, I wanted to see Clackamas County set up a daycare center for employees. But yeah, they'd pay for it. It's not going to be free, of course, but it's in the building. And if we didn't reach capacity, then we could open it up to outside people. But that is not doable I, from what I understand. I also read a statistic a couple weeks ago that during this COVID crisis that Clackamas County has lost 18% of its permanent daycare operations. And I think that came from our, our health director. And that's a sad state of affairs as we're trying to get people back to their workplaces and all the stresses involved in that. I also know I think um, hybrid models have emerged during this. And as I talk to people um, who have uh, school age kids, um, they have <coughs> created their own situations with their friends and relatives where they piggyback and they share their, not only their education during when there was home learning, but also their daycare needs. Yeah. So they have sought to create some of the solutions for themselves, and I encourage everybody to do this. That should all be part of the conversation. It that has, be, and you bring up a lot of things that I am interested in. I'm wondering, however, if staff can be prepared in September to do that with all the stakeholders whom you want to right. bring into the conversation. Oh, I, I think this is going to take a while. We don't have to do it. Well, I mean, but you know, the conversation, but we can have the conversation. conversation. Um, you know, I'm okay uh, with a letter. Okay. Uh, as long as there's no mandates, as long as there's no fees, and there's no taxes. Uh, I, of course, I haven't seen the letter either. You know, run it by Gary. and. Let's talk with this through Gary. So I am going to throw something out for commissioners. I'm going to say in September that we do the uh, Commissioner Savas' recommendation 
on congestion pricing and tolling. In October, we do the child care concerns and needs. Okay. We may want to have a different title to that. Just so during that conversation, we can have um, some people come in and talk, maybe the chamber I, and maybe the workforce right. folks and whoever you have identified. So you, Fisher, you two commissioners, Commissioners okay. Fisher and Schrader can work with uh, Gary and staff right. and Tina at this particular town hall, I'm thinking. Okay. And just, just bring it forward. And then Commissioner Savas, um, if you want to work on the September town hall um, with uh, Chris and Trent and whomever else um, that you want assistance with that on, maybe Commissioner Shaw, uh, and figure out how we want to go with that. And then November, public safety seeks for itself. That's a ways off. We can do that. What do you think about that, commissioners? I, I think it's fine. I don't. I think we're not even talking right. At least from my perspective, at this point, what we want to have is a larger conversation right. of what do we do with stakeholders and sometimes the stakeholders that maybe aren't the usual suspects as well. So I'm not talking about any mandates, fees, or taxes or no. anything of like that at this point. Right now, it's exploratory. The only thing I want to make sure of with Gary is the early learning hub. A lot of them uh, should be should be have a really close relationship with the ESD and the superintendents of the schools because the early learning hub is also mandated to meet uh, educational criteria. And it's, and our structure is for us our the early learning hub is, is more of a, a function within the county, but that connection to the ESD is going to be pretty critical as we move forward. So I want to make sure we're not spent. Okay, mm -hmm. Gary, I'm really being sensitive to Thank Well, you. too, and I, don't, I just don't want to have a town hall where people call up and say we need more daycare. I want to have a town call that we can reciprocate our callers and say, yes, we are mindful. These are the obstacles. These are possible solutions we could do. We haven't, because it really needs needs to be informative. You know, the town hall that we had, um, was that last week already, yes, on, yes. on the wildfire situation, yes. Dylan? We had over, what, 119 participants in that, or I don't remember right. how it was. And we we couldn't get all the comments in, and you couldn't read all your emails, and you sent out an email, so that had great interest. I think this will, too. Okay, and I'm going to talk to Gary and Rod to make sure, sure we're not backing them into a corner with any budget. I kind of feel that way a you, little you, bit. Gary. You are doing that, yes. So quickly, you're two different that, topics yeah. going on here. First is your town hall yeah. topics. Chair is recommending September is congestion pricing, October is child care, November is public safety. Are you all good with that, commissioners? Yeah. If there's a crisis, we'll revisit it, but for now we have a plan. Okay. Thank you. The second is the letter you want to sign with Commissioner Fisher. You can sign any letter you want. Uh, if you're committing staff to work on this, then I suggest you need to revise one of your 10 strategic priorities because this yeah, is not on it. That's so take I'm something off and we'll about. add this on. This is a considerable yeah. amount of staff time, what I'm, okay. I think I'm hearing. That's so. why, Well, that's what I need to find out from Rod because that was my concern when I saw when I saw the word the plan is I thought whoa wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute because you're right it did come up but we're not and that's why I'm trying to like be real careful with this yeah we can go on in October we can have a discussion about the child okay. care yeah I don't and think and that but it's whether or not how much we involve the early learning hub if they're just giving a list and we have a group of folks external to that and they're just aware of it rather than having them like they're not the lead you know I mean they want to be aware but I'm not I don't want to yeah I'm yeah. sensitive to the scarce time and the money we piece can talk offline with you on that uh, but okay. for now of course it's fine to sign the letter uh, all right you agree the board to sign the letter right. but that's that, fine, so. okay we're good we're good yeah I'd like okay. to see the letter yeah I would be because I don't to. want to be I don't want to be blindsided well I have learned through all my years here, that surprises are never welcome. Oh, yeah. Never um, oh, surprises. Now, okay, are there you. any county-sponsored daycare centers, or are they all private? Uh, Rod, no, no, no county-sponsored, correct? No. I didn't think so, and okay. I do think it's a private sector function. Yes. I'd like to keep it that way, Commissioner Savas. So, just two things. I no. didn't want to interrupt the conversation, so. Um, when I was thinking about having some experts, we might have to be calling on some people from maybe ODOT. I don't know what availability is. So in the event that we can't assemble that in, in time, um, we should have something in, you know, in the queue to substitute. Well, what other topics, commissioners, do you want to think, do you think it's necessary to have a town hall on? Chair Smith, um, 
I was thinking that emergency response preparation is still another big issue on the minds of the people of the county. We've, we've talked about that a lot, but I don't know if we, if we talked about it enough with the people of the county. Um, we could have that as a secondary. By then, I think we will be making decisions on our emergency preparedness council. I think the application process will go out. We kind of touched on it this month with wildfires. Um, and, you know, I talked about it a little bit, but um, we could probably tee that one up in short order. Um, what do you think, Dylan? That certainly, oh, excuse me, that certainly gets people, that certainly gets people talking. I mean, we saw the response to the wildfire was and 125. The other ones, uh, the only ones I'll mention else uh, that are at the bottom of the memo, the one that we did have our, our highest turnout for last year was involving the mental health resources in Clackamas County, um, where we had uh, Gally Murray, for example, with some tips on you know suicide awareness and prevention. Well, September is Suicide Awareness Month. So right. maybe we could have that as a secondary. I don't know, what do you think? I'm just, I'm just throwing stuff out, seeing what sticks on well, the wall. Not, that's not bad if, it is, if it's um, that's true. the topic of the month yeah. mm -hmm. or the issue of the month. So do we, have the, do we have one of these uh, town halls in December? Yes, I just listed the, the first three here. Sorry, right. yes. Okay. Is there a time for congestion pricing where decision points are going to be made? Uh, no. Uh, it's really their their ODOT has really taken on the t it's taken the lead on doing the outreach, but it's not getting to every everywhere. And I think that you know we're going to talk about, but what's when they do it on a regional basis, it's really not focused on Clackamas County as much, even though there might be some issues about because 205 is one of them, um, I5 being the other, and there's other ideas that Metro is has considered in their study that would be. Um, throughout the region within the metro boundaries. So it's a broad topic, but I think we, it's going to be bite by bite. But I think if it's going to be for Clackamas County, the Board of County Commissioners, it, I think the impacts of Clackamas County, I think it'd be unique. And I think it'd be, it's almost incumbent upon us to somehow address that on behalf of our constituency. Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe we can kind of nuance this and see what, how, I don't know. Gee, that's terrible. That's not good board direction, Gary. Uh, how about, Dylan, can your can PJ staff find out if ODOT is available ASAP, and if not, come back next Tuesday to the board and give them an update? We're, we're running out of time, commissioners. We have a right, lot right. to do So what, when, yes. which Wednesday would it be, considering that our, our break, our summer break? The September, all the dates for the town halls are the first Wednesday of the month, with the exception of September, because it is when you are on break. And then the following uh, week is the night meeting. And we don't like to have you know two night meetings in a row. So the September date is still to be determined. And talking with county administration, it seems probably that one would come in the middle of the month, so we would have some more prep time for it. But it'd be a Wednesday then, or not necessarily. Yes. Okay, mm, so not necessarily, I guess, but preferably a okay, Wednesday. So it'd be either the 11th or the 18th, or no, excuse me, I'm in the wrong month. It'd be the 15th or 22nd. Uh, I don't know why my devices, everything's just it's either 8th or 15th or 22nd of September. Those are the Wednesdays in September. If it's a Wednesday, there's the, the September 1st is a Wednesday, but that's a holiday, or well, that's a, that's the break. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I would say the 22nd. Just because you're dealing your right to back to back EV meetings. We try to avoid that. That might be hard. Yeah. Okay. Just some input on the congestion pricing. I think it's useful if the information that we receive translates into some sort of action, like you were saying mm -hmm. with the childcare. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where the influence points are from us and connecting with ODOT or with the Commission, Transportation Commission, but I would like to see some sort of outcome from it. Well, yeah, I, what's, I, I don't know that that's necessarily been a criteria for any of the town halls. For example, the last one, what was, what was the decision or outcome for that? Yep. Uh, we're constantly making decisions on wildfire preparedness and looking at emergency can response. Give, can you give me an example? Well, the plan that Daniel came to talk about, I mean, the input, there was a lot of really good input that will result in policy. I mean, I just want to funnel it, if it's possible, to funnel 
well, the yeah, input, we're, we're not, so yeah, people aren't just coming to complain or, like, what are we going to do about it? Well, I think on, when, Paul, when Paul was mentioning tolls and congestion pricing, I think our big give on that is that we're making people aware yeah. of what it is and how the decisions were made. Because I get emails, no tolls, no tolls, no tolls, as if this board is a decision point and we are not. And I think that piece right there, Sonia, could be our takeaway, is, oh, our board didn't do it. Oh, we have a value statement on transportation that we were all really serious about. Oh, well, you're, doing, oh, well, you're playing good in the sandbox, so we're not overlooked, so we get our, 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 our paving packages. It was, and I think you know, we can explain that to the public and they'd understand it. On the wildfire management, I think that had already been in place before our town hall meeting, but if we can hear from people, we don't make a decision point in town halls. We mainly listen. Mm -hmm. We offer some of our comments occasionally throughout. Um, I think, you know, we'll just kind of play that by ear to see how it comes, how it comes up. And so if we were to, in September, do the suicide prevention month at slash mental health, the people listening out there, I'm thinking this is going to fall on Rod Cook's house. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, are you prepared and have you thought about uh, how you want to do that? I'm just putting that in your, in your thinking cap. Yeah. Gary? So, commissioners, we are so over time. I'm going to suggest we uh, come back to this again. So, Dylan, do what you can. You know, you, you can have a more you can have more town halls than monthly. Yeah. There's enough topics yes. here to have every two weeks if you wanted. Yes, absolutely. Come back next week, please. We'll have an updated memo for you. Okay. Yeah, Thank really you. Useful. Okay, uh, we're going to go to the consent agenda item next. We're going to try and do this in 30 minutes. So, staff, please be as efficient as you can. Juvenile first. Approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Clackamas Education Service District to provide education and vocational opportunities for at-risk youth. Educational Service District will fund $43,000 and the balance of $48,615 will be covered by county general funds. Christina, go ahead. Good morning, Commissioners. Christina McMahon, Juvenile Department Director for Clackamas County. And as Gary just stated, this is an intergovernmental agreement that we've had for the last nine years with the Clackamas Education Service District and also through our partnership with the Oregon Youth Authority. This program serves um, approximately 32 youth at any given time. As youth uh, finish up with our services, we, we rotate new kids in. This provides really important uh, life skills, educational training, apprenticeships. It's very um, customized and individualized depending on what the particular youth needs to transition successfully into adulthood. That's really the goal of this. Uh, so uh, it's been a wonderful partnership, and we'd like to see this continue. Thank you. Any comments or questions for the presenter? Hearing none, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Next, thank community you. corrections. Approval of an intergovernmental agreement between Clackamas County Community Corrections and the Housing Authority of Clackamas County for supportive mental health housing. $343,064 funded through supportive housing services. No county general funds are involved. Go ahead, Malcolm. Good morning, Malcolm McDonald, Director of Community Corrections. Uh, this funding will support an existing program that is two houses that supports uh, individuals suffering from mental illness that are on parole or probation. It offers stabilization. Uh, most of the individuals that enter this program are homeless or houseless or exiting custody. Um, it's been an ongoing program and contract with Bridges to Change. If you may recall, I had to cut the program uh, two budgets ago, um, and during the last year, uh, H3S uh, was a very helpful in keeping the program going with a, a variety of funding. Commissioner Fisher. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm remembering that there were some state funds. We did a lot of lobbying to try to get that back that was cut that resulted in cuts. Is that, was that affecting this program? Which state funding are you, are you referring to community corrections funding in general? Mm -hmm. Yes. So two years at the previous biennium, there was no additional funding to community corrections. Um, this biennium, they did fund, but there's still a reduction in our funding due to a reduction in the number of people on supervision in Clackamas County. So there's not... So this funding source saying supportive housing services, is it actually the state funding that comes mm -hmm. to the county? No, this is, this is through... This is the metro area funding 
that will support this program. So you'll hear when H3S comes up, they have a, the same topic. So this is through the Supportive Housing Services measure funding that will support this housing okay. moving forward. Well, maybe we just will um, have to just fill in the blanks and see how all it works. I constantly like to know our funding streams mm -hmm. and how that's all working. So yeah. I just don't know what Supportive Housing Services where those dollars. So is that the metro tax? That we is don't have that money yet, so why is there an IGA right now? It's when we get the money? It's when we get the money. So they have... A Jill, do you want to come forward, please? Sorry. Let's, let's figure this out now, please. No worries. By the way, I had the same questions when I saw the terminology, supportive housing services. This really needs to be clear if you're going to use that terminology, folks, and anybody out there listening. So, so this was going to come before you, and it is the Supportive Housing Services Metro funding. It's, the th it's being paid for and contracted out of the three million advance we've already received. This is the existing programs the board has already approved to fund. So okay. This is the first IGA you're gonna see that was pre-approved. So we're moving okay. into implementation. Keep any further comments? These folks asked. Commissioner Fisher? Yeah, so, this is an existing program that has been funded. So how is this a part of our local implementation plan? This was always considered to be funded because um, Malcolm, we've been talking to him for some time because it was on the verge of being ended. This would, would have been the last year and these folks wouldn't have had a place to be. Correct. Had this not been funded by H3S and continue to be funding, we would have had to close this program down. It houses individuals that are severely mentally ill and also justice involved and high utilizers of the system. It provides them an, an area to stabilize on their medication and pr have supportive mentoring and uh, individuals that are trained to work with them and transition them back into permanent housing. So there is a, a variety of time frames individuals stay and so it offers a wide array of services and also reduces the likelihood they'll be reincarcerated or keeps them out of um, our jails because of their behaviors. They're not often able to be housed um, in other areas, and this is one place that offers that opportunity for them to stabilize in, um, in a safe environment. Yeah, I absolutely understand the importance. I'm just interested in when we put together the local implementation plan, there were all these existing programs. We had $8 million that was dedicated that we weren't going to move, and so I'm just not sure how that... I'm sure that, that if you ask for a list, it will be presented to you. ...is going, this. and why we aren't using those dollars to fund existing programs as we were before instead of using the new dollars, which are to implement uh, the new program of the local implementation plan. So that's, that's a concern and a question, so... So um, this funding is, is prioritized for Population A. These folks are Population A, um, highly vulnerable, disabled, homeless. Um, and the funding that was being used to pay for it previously has ended. So it was, it's always been in all of our discussions, these two homes have been part of things that were ending that people were going to become homeless and we wanted to prioritize. Um, and it is in category under shelter because it's temporary housing, shelter, temporary housing. So that is the, um, the line it's on in the, the documents that we talked about. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Schrader? Yeah, so essentially, uh, I'm understanding it from you folks. These were grants that we had, they ended. And now since they've ended, it's, it's appropriate to use these dollars to maintain that level of service to these populations that are already fitting the criteria of the LIP, I mean, of, of what that's going to cover. Mm -hmm. exactly. So, I mean, it would be gone. And I, if I recall, that was one of our issues when we talked about prioritizing was, okay, people, these ones are going to, because I remember having that conversation, Commissioner, that these folks are going to end up on the streets if we don't figure this out. So when we work through this, that's why we made it a priority because this was imminent. Mm -hmm. But it fits the it fits the framework of what we can be using it for, you know. And that's kind of what my assertion would be to our other colleagues in Metro. In this well, case. isn't this yeah. part of the 335 people that we're preserving housing for? 
Yeah, this was always in our plan. Right, um, this is nothing new. This is a, this is new. So I, that's why I would say, okay, this yeah. to me was a, uh, you know, we can't let people, you know. It's a highly that's successful a, program. Yeah, no, I think Okay, that's, commissioners, I think commissioners, I'm going to end the discussion here. We okay. have got to get through this material. I feel like we keep regurgitating the same information to try to get staff to make, uh, to, to support our opinion that we have. Uh, no further discussion. This will be up here for approval. Gary, what's up next? So just for the Gary, record, so, I, no, I have, Fisher, I'm and serious I on this. Get the question gonna, to later. But I do, uh, since Can you please follow up on a side after this session so it's, we it's can It's going to take me 10 seconds to ask the question. You've never done anything in 10 seconds. Okay, well, Commissioner Schrader said that a grant ended. I'm interested in knowing what grant that was that ended. We will have that answer forthcoming. You are excused. Thank you for okay. coming forward. We out. are up next on the next item, please. So, Thank you right. very Malcolm's much. Malcolm's still here. All right, next. Approval to apply for a grant between the State of Oregon Criminal Justice Commission, Justice Reinvestment, and Clackamas County Community Corrections to continue the pretrial program. The total grant value is $2,441,218 through the Criminal Justice Commission. No county general funds are involved. This is a renewal of our justice reinvestment to continue to support the programs that are in place, pre-trial supervision, our short-term transitional leave program, and expanded uh, CSAP program. Um, this funding also, 10% goes to victims groups in the county that have um, been awarded it through LIPSIC. This application was approved by the local public safety coordinating council last week. Um, and yeah, it's just maintaining the programs that are already in place. Any objections or comments to this? Seeing none, thank you, Malcolm. Okay, so we'll put both of these on the consent agenda. We'll answer Commissioner Fisher's questions before uh, next week on the number one, please. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. All right, moving on. Housing Authority of Clackamas County. First, approval of an intergovernmental agreement between the Housing Authority of Clackamas County and the Community Development Division for Homeless Management Information System Staffing, $143,750, funded through the HUD CARES Act Funds Emergency Solutions Grant and Non-CARES Act Emergency Solution Grant Funds. No county general funds are involved. Jill and Rod, go ahead. All right, could you just time out? Could maybe Commissioner Fisher and- Commissioner and Fisher, we can outside. hear your conversation. Please take it so we can't hear. Thank you. Just the noises. Okay, go ahead. Do you want me to take it? Yeah, go ahead. This is a position that community de development is funding as um, chair, Sh as administrator, excuse me, <laughs> Schmidt described. It will fund one position that will train and support contracted agencies on an ongoing data input and reporting requirements linked to HMIS. It will eventually be paid for once we get funding in by supportive housing. So it's kind of a bridge funding for the first year. Any objections or comments on this? Seeing so, none, next. Well, well, actually, Paul? I, I do. Just so real, real quick, br bridge to what? Bridge until we receive money from supportive housing to begin paying for this position permanently. It's, okay. one, it's one year funding. Okay. Up next. Okay, next, approval of an amendment to an IGA between Health Housing and Human Services and the Housing Authority of Clackamas County to allow for an increase from part-time to full-time case managers serving the Housing Authority of Clackamas County public housing residents. The amendment adds $110,000, which is $55,000 a year for two years for a total contract value of $1,267,344.91, funded through county general funds through the policy level proposal, but it's county general funds entirely. Go ahead, please. Any objections or comments? Seeing none, thank you. Okay, number three. Approval of an IGA between Housing Authority of Clackamas County and the Clackamas County Community Corrections for funding supportive mental health housing for corrections participants. $343,064 funded through supportive housing services. No county general funds are involved. This is the companion to what you just heard from Malcolm already. Any comments or objections? Hearing none. Next, approval to execute amendment number one to the contract between Housing Authority of Clackamas County and Cantor Taylor PC for legal services for the financing of low-income housing tax credit and real estate transactions. Total increase is $150,000 and the term is extended to April 2025. Funding through the low-income housing tax credit, no county general funds are involved. 
This is an extension and, a, and an amendment to an existing contract with Counter Taylor. They specialize in helping us get through financial closings. They helped us with the manor, with the Webster Road redevelopment, and we're hoping to continue a relationship with them for the Hillside Park redevelopment. Any comments or questions for the presenters? Seeing none, Gary next. Okay, thank you. Next, Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. First, request by the Sheriff's Office to approve amendment number one to the intergovernmental agreement with the North Clackamas County School District. The school district will fund the cost of one deputy at $144,124 and a one-time training at $89,247.73. No county general funds are involved. We have the team. Can you introduce yourselves, please? Thank you, Com Administrator Schmidt. Good morning. Chair Smith and Commissioners, I'm Nancy Artman, the Sheriff's Finance Manager. With me today are Lieutenants Chris Kate and Kevin Thies. Brought to you for your consideration first is an amendment to the current IGA with the North Clackamas School District. This will add one school resource officer to the new Adrian C. Young High School in Happy Valley. There are no general fund dollars involved. <coughs> Any comments or questions for the presenters on this item? Uh, just, the, just the one question is, is this a school not had an SRO before or? No, it's a new high school. Okay, okay. And the training involved is training who? That is a good question. So one year in advance of any outside entity requesting a position, we ask that they pay for the cost of bringing on that new body. So that would get them through the academy and all other costs. So, so it's, it's an attempt to recover our costs for adding an additional mm -hmm. body without any cost incurred by the county. Okay, got it. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none. Uh, second, approval of an amendment with DePaul Industries to provide security services for Justice Court, Juvenile, and the Circuit Court. This amendment adds $588,500.16 for a total contract value of $1,649,176.76 funded through the Sheriff's Office, the Justice Court, and some general funds. Go ahead, please. Um, yeah, this amendment is a uh, accounts for a increase for the existing contract with DePaul Security, who provides uniform screening and uh, uh, security at both the Justice Court, the Juvenile Court, and the 807 Main Street Courthouse. These dollars used to be budgeted as a pass-through through the general fund. They are currently budgeted within the Sheriff's Office budget and the Justice Court budget. The funds for juvenile are also included in the sheriff's office budget, and we will coordinate reimbursement with the juvenile department. Commissioner Fisher, your card's up. Oh, sorry. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Hearing none. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Next, Clackamas County Service District Number Five, a board resolution certifying the 2021-2022 assessment roll for Clackamas County Service District Number Five, which is street lighting. The assessment reflects a five percent re five percent reduction in all rate categories, as discussed and approved by the Budget Committee. No general funds are involved. Go ahead, Dan. Not really sure what I'm going to add. Um, basically, this is the budget. Uh, this is asserting the uh, assessment roll for the street lighting district. I want to affirm to the board that it um, reflects the 5% cut uh, in rates that we had shared with the budget committee at that point in time. Good. Any further comments or questions for the presenters? Seeing none, thank you. Great. Next, transportation and development. Approval of a contract with NTA Contracting for the 232nd Drive Roadway at MPO3 project. The value of the contract is three, $326,376.36. The road fund match is $33,723.94. No county general funds are involved. Thank you so much. Clackamas County obtained federal emergency relief program funding to repair and stabilize the roadway on 232nd Drive at mile post 0 0.3. The road was damaged in March of 2017 as a result of heavy rains that occurred during the spring of 2017 and saturated the soil that was supporting the road. Mm. I can affirm to the board um, that this project was advertised in accordance with ORS and LCRB rules on April 28, 2021, and bids were open on May 27, 2021. The county only received one base bid from NTA contracting for the, for the dollars that were discussed. However, we reviewed that bid, found it consistent with current practices, and are uh, requesting it go forward um, for consideration by the board on the consent. Any objections or comments? Seeing none. 
Next development agency, approval of an amendment for the contract with Harper, Huff, Peterson, Regalis for the phase two of the Clackamas Regional Center Mobility Improvement Project. The amendment increases the contract by $580,800. It is funded through the Clackamas Town Center Urban Renewal Fund. No county general funds are involved. Thank you so much. Um, HHPR uh, is under contract to complete construction engineering and services for Clackamas Regional Center Mobility Project. This happens to be the 26 plus million dollar project that's going on on Sunnyside Road just crossing over I-205. Um, essentially we have had, uh, there have been additional services uh, that have been, uh, we've requested HHPR, HHPR to assist us with on a project of this complexity. A number of those issues uh, that required additional service beyond what was originally contemplated included a review and responding to over 200 requests for information and over 150 proposed change orders submitted by the contractor. Um, How many? 150 change orders um, submitted by the contractor. Uh, responding to multiple delay claims and protests, they basically help us assist in, in reviewing those and asserting those and processing those. There was some additional survey and construction staking um, due to the construction approach, uh, design modifications, and we, we are increasing uh, substantial completion deadline 30 days due to some of the closure we have because of the regional fires. We actually closed that project down uh, when we were dealing with the fire issues that were happening on the uh, Portland Metropolitan Region. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Commissioner Savas. So this is kind of over budget then in all reality. The design costs have gone up um, based on the means and methods proposed by the contractor. Um, and there are, there are a couple of different reasons associated with that. That's a, it's an investment of money that protects us, legally protects us, and requires an independent review of Senate, these de delay claims that are um, proposed and or adjustments um, or requests for information are posted to the contractor. Also, I'm going to note there was substantial increase in the project cost due to consolidation of projects. If you recall, Commissioner Savas, you're very um, invested in that discussion around those urban renewal projects in that area. There was the Stevens Road, Sunnyside Road project, and then there was the overpass project. We consolidated those, so that had some increase. We also had the CRW um, uh, water line improvements that were included, that we're getting reimbursed for, that were also included in this. So some of those costs aren't necessarily um, over budget, but they were unestimated at the time we originally developed the project. Yeah, so on behalf of the agency, the agency's picking up this full 580000 Yes. That just, just concerns me. Yeah. Is this whole project a federally mandated project? No, we have no federal funds associated with it. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or uh, <coughs> objections? Seeing none. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Uh, next, Water Environment Services. Approval of a contract with Wolf Water Resources for the watershed protection. Benthic, whoa, microinvertebrate and geomorphical <laughs> monitoring. Contract value is 159,000. <laughs> Chris will tell me how I also. pronounced it wrong. A contract value $159,530,000 through West Surface Water Operating Fund, and the City of Lake Oswego is contributing $21,050 through a subsequent IGA. No county general funds are involved. Go ahead, Chris. Thank you. Chris Story, Assistant Director of Water and Government Services. Actually, Commissioner Schrader is the expert in this subject. She has a degree in it. Uh, the short answer is this is sampling in streams throughout our surface water area. Uh, we are partnering uh, with the option with the City of Lake Oswego to help accomplish it. This is required by our permit, but we're testing a bit more than that to uh, meet our performance clackabus metrics mm. as well. Can I go out yes, go on ahead. some of the testing? <laughs> I'd like to go on a field trip. Okay, any <laughs> other uh, comments or objections? Seeing none, thank you, Chris. Great. Next, approval of an intergovernmental agreement between Water Environment Services and the City of Oregon City for the transfer of ownership of two sanitary sewer manholes and two sanitary sewer pipe segments. There is no financial impact. We discovered that we were maintaining a system that we owned and the City of Oregon City was maintaining it because they thought they owned it. Um, oh. It's probably been happening for a while now and they were more than happy to take over that portion of the system, these few manholes, and maintain it, which relieves us of the cost and obligation. So we're happy to transfer these assets to them. Any comments or objections? Hearing none. Finally, approval of a purchase of sale agreement between Clackamas Water Environment Services and certain individuals pertaining to the purchase of a vacant parcel for Hoodlands Sandy Lane Pump Station Relocation Project. The cost is $95,000 plus share of closing costs. Funding through West Wastewater Capital Fund. No county general funds are involved. This is a request to be on this Thursday's business meeting. It is. This is the project where we are relocating a pump station further away from the channel migration zone, and we've talked about it before. Any comments or objections? 
seeing none. And we'll add that to this Thursday's agenda, if that's yes, okay, Chair. That's Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Chris. All right. There's 10 minutes left. Uh, Commissioners Schrader and Savas, can you do the Administrator Housing Task Force in 10 minutes? Update. Go for it. And I did see, did we give materials to everybody? So they were post. You were emailed the materials. They were supposed to be posted okay. online. I think there may have been a misstep. It was inadvertent. I apologize. But can you okay. speak into? It was definitely emailed to you. So we have them in our emails okay. right now. Have you yeah. got? Have you got it? Okay, because I. Okay. All, all, all of right. you got in your emails, yes. Okay. And Rod or Jill, feel free to come forward. And Elizabeth, <laughs> you're all part of the housing task. Come on to the table. Come on. Come on up. Just in case. Yeah, I do know we have a hard stop at noon, right? I know. Yes. Yeah, okay. we have our, so I'll, I'll just Paul, be. Paul, just still jump in. Yeah, so I'll, my I'll just, computer is not resetting for me to get my uh, current emails. So I'll just Go be. Ahead. I'll just be brief. Um, staff brought us a uh, review of a request accounting of the eight point two million dollars that uh, was identified as the existing funding in the LIP. Um, that we have been hearing that. There's this uh, assumption that there's been this cut that the 8.2 was actually cut or not spent, and staff presented us a spreadsheet um, which shows that it, it hasn't been cut, and it actually the number that's been committed to support housing services 11.4, 11.3 on the back side. Hey Paul, can you yeah. tell us which document you're looking at? Um, I'm not sure what you have in front of you. So it's the it's the spreadsheet. And then on the back side, it says 11, $11.344 million, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's going off the of memory. Yeah, it looks like it. There it is, Let's right there. I, I believe. One of those two. Sun? Yep, that's it. Okay, so okay. now, now, okay. so um, that we, we've asked, I, I asked for uh, a better, uh, another mm -hmm. column be added for some more information, and we're going to work on what that information okay. is. So this is the work in progress. We're, we're going to be developing this. I, I want to make sure this is as comprehensive as possible so we can put to rest. Um, uh, this 8.2 million cut issue. It's just so, it's just been such, so taxing to all of us. And so um, our goal is to do that and actually, it actually be a tool, an instrument that would be uh, ideally utilized um, when we're going before the oversight committee here in a, is it a couple weeks, you're going before them. I don't know the date, yeah. but yes, yeah. we could use it ongoing. Yeah, so well, there'll be more to come. That, that again, it's a work in progress. I will, you know, it's, we get call actually call it a draft because it's not the final document. It's just a work in progress. So that's a, I have a little, a little have a concern about putting these documents out there because you know they are they, they're not ready for public consumption. So I'm just kind of concerned about that. Maybe we should just put draft on it then. They, they should have draft on them um, really because they're not again they're not ready for uh, public consumption. Uh, we had also had a brief discussion on revenue forecasting. Elizabeth um, and I were talking. Right. Just no, you may not. Please do not yeah. interrupt the presenter. Besides, we are not going to continue this because at least two commissioners have no idea what you're talking about because I'm frozen out of this email and this email. Gary. Yes, can we, can we just postpone this to the afternoon? And sure. We'll print copies for all of you. We're having some email issues. I mean, uh, I have no have idea what you're talking about, yeah, and right. I know it's good work, and I know we need a further discussion. You have something that I don't have that I don't think Commissioner yeah, Scholl has either. Have so we're going to continue this. We're going to break now. I suggest we return at, since we're running late, at 1.15, and we all work really hard because I will start promptly at 1.15 this afternoon. Thank you very much. Can you be here at 115 and we'll do this right around 15? Thank you.